Again, welcome to Unit 1, Part 1 Lectures. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to study about uh, the concept of uh, statistics, that's introduction. And this is a course named DSRT 734, Inferential Statistics in Decision Making. So again, this unit, we are going to study an overview of uh, statistics, for example, the definition. Also, we should distinguish between population and a sample. Also, distinguish between parameter and a statistic. And also, the difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So first, we will go through what is a data. As we all know, in statistics, data is the main element or the main ingredients that we need because statistics is about analyzing data managing data collecting data so the first thing we need to do is to understand what is a data according to the definition here a data consists of information coming from observations counts measurement or responses so an observation can be any entity example a data coming from a customer a patient, a product, any type of product, and also a count. We count how many products we have in an inventory or how many customers we serve today in a restaurant. And so the data can come from both counting or measurement, the height of a person, the weight of a person, measurement, or responses based on a survey. We give out a survey. Uh, we get a response back. So data consists of information coming from observations, counts, measurement, or responses. So example giving you people who eat three daily services of whole grains have been shown to reduce their risk of stroke by 37%. Again, this source came from whole grains council. So here we have a data. And the data is telling us that people who eat three daily servings of a whole grace reduce the chance of getting a stroke by 37%. Another example saying 70% of the 1,500 US spinal cord injuries to minors result from vehicle accident and 68% were not wearing a seat belt. So this is an example of two sources of data. So we move to what is a statistics. As we said earlier, statistics is dealing with data, collecting, analyzing, managing data. So here, the definition said, the science of collecting there are so many ways or techniques we can use to collect data. So the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data in order to make decisions. So statistics is the science of collecting, analyzing, organizing, and interpreting data in order to make a decision. And a population is a collection of all outcomes responses, measurement, or counts that are of interest. So a population, for example, we can say, okay, a population of uh, adults from the age 20 to 30 in New York City. This means we are talking about everybody in New York City between the ages of 20 to 30 years. Now, next we go through what is a sample. A sample will be the subset of the population. So if the population of adults between the age of 20 and 30 years in New York City are 2 million, we can select a subset of that population, which we will call the sample. Let's say we randomly select 100 adults between the age of 20 to 30 from the million or 2 million population. So again, a population is a collection of all the outcomes. Responses, 
measurement or counts that of interest. Now, a sample will be the subset of the population. So we have a nice diagram here. So we can see this is a population, let's say, a population of all the adults living in New York City. And we don't want, we want to do some studies, but in this case, we take a sample of three of them. So we can see we select one, two, and three. So three out of maybe 10, there, that's a sample. So a sample with a subset of the population. And the population is all the outcome. So here yeah, they say we should identify the data set. So this is an example. We say there's a recent survey. In the recent survey, we have 1,708 adults in the United States were asked if they think global warming is a problem that requires immediate government action. 939 of the adults said yes. Here they say we should identify the population and the sample, and also we should describe the data set. So this data set is about, again, uh, response from adults, 1,708 adults. If a global warming is a problem that the government requires immediate action. So here we say the population consists of what? All the responses of all adults in the US. So population will be all the adults. Here we didn't categorize the adults age or uh, the city they are living in. So here we say 1,708 adults in the United States. So the population will be all adults in the United States, not a specific city. So population consists of the responses of all adults in the United States. Then 1,708 were asked in a survey. So that would be the sample. So the sample consists of the responses of the 1,708 adults in the US in the survey. Now the sample is the subset of the responses of all adults in the US. Because here the question said 1,708 adults were asked in US. Now if we say 1,708 is the population, it means in, in United States, US, all the adults total is 1,708. But here they said they were asked. So that would be a survey and it would be the sample. Now the data set consists of 939 yeses and 769 no's, which was again stated in the problem. So next, let's understand what is a parameter and also what is a statistic. Now, a parameter is the number that describes a population characteristics. So a parameter is the characteristics of a population. Example here, the average age of all people in the United States. Now, here we say all the people, so the population. So that's a parameter. Now, when we say the average age of the sample, in this case, 1,708 survey, that's not the parameter, that would be the statistic. So parameter is the characteristics of the population, whereas statistics is the characteristics of the sample. So again, parameter, the number that describe a population characteristic. Now, statistic is the number that describe a sample characteristic, so average age, of people from a sample of three states. So this is a good example. Average age of all people in the United States, that would be a parameter because we are referring to the population, describing the characteristics of a population. The characteristics that we are describing here is their age. What is the average age? In computer science, we may use the term variable, or we may also use the term uh, uh, is is field like database field or attributes. So again, 
parameter is the number that describes the population characteristics, and statistics is the number that describes a sample characteristics. So let's see an example here. Here they say we should find the difference or distinguish parameter and statistic. So decided whether the numeric value describes a population parameter or a sample statistic. Here they say a recent survey of a sample of MBAs reported that the average salary for an MBA is more than 82,000. So the solution, we say sample statistic, that's the average of 82,000 is based on the subset of the population. Because why? They said a recent survey, they already give us the keyword, sample. A recent survey of sample. So we say the statistic is the characteristics of a sample. So the question already tell us, use the term sample. A recent survey of a sample of MBA is reported that the average salary for MBA is more than 82,000. So the sample statistic, because the average salary is the sample of MBAs reported. Now decided whether the numerical value describe a population parameter or a sample statistic again, we say the starting salary for the 666 MBA graduates from University of Chicago Graduate School of Business increased 8.5% from the previous years. Now here you can see, we are saying that 667 MBA graduates from the University of Chicago Graduate School of Business. So this of course will be a population because all the MBA students that graduated that very year. So population parameter, because the percent increase of 8.5% is based on all the 667 graduate starting salaries. So now we know the difference between population and sample, and also what is a parameter and what is a statistic. The next section we're going to learn about the branches of statistics. First, we are going to start with the descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics involve organizing, summarizing, and dis displaying data. So example, tables, charts, and average. And actually that's what we are going through this week. And this week we learned about the frequency table, frequency distribution, histogram, uh, stem plots, dot plots. Again, these are all descriptive statistics. These graphs, we use it to organize our data. Then next we move to, to find the central tendency, like finding the mean media mode. That's also descriptive statistics to summarize the data. Organizing the data, we use the graphs and charts and also tables like frequency table or frequency distribution, uh, stem plot as we said, histogram. These are all to organize the data. To summarize the data, we can find the central tendency. We can also find the standard deviation, variance or range, which is the dispersion or how the data varies, variation of the data. So those are again, descriptive statistics. This week also we study the location of the data, like finding the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and also finding the outline of a data set. And those are the values that are very small or very large comparing to the rest of the data. So this is a descriptive statistics involve organizing, summary, summarizing, and displaying the data. Then inferential statistics, which we are going to study from next three weeks along the line, is involved using the sample data to draw conclusion about a population. So example will be finding the confidence interval, hypothesis testing, which is very common, or uh, estimations, point of estimations, and we will go through all those non-parameter testing, etc. 
Also, we're going to study probability. Uh, so here, yeah, let's see the difference now between descriptive and inferential statistics. Example is given here. Here, they say we should decide, decide which part of the studies represent descriptive branch of statistics. What conclusion might be drawn from the study using inferential statistics? So we see how the question was formulated. They say we should what? Decide which part of the study represent descriptive, descriptive branch of statistics. Now, what conclusion might be drawn from the study using what? Inferential statistics. So we use inferential statistics, basically working with a sample to make a decision on the population. That's like generalizing. So here we say a large sample of men, age 48, was steady for 18 years. This is a sample of men, age 48, was steady for 18 years. For unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive at the age of 65. But for married men, 90% were alive at age 65. So here, we say that descriptive statistics involve what? The statements such as for all married men, approximately 70% we are alive at age 65. For married men, 90% we are alive at age 65. Now, the possible decision, which is the inferential, inferential statistics is making a decision on a population based on a sample. And here we are using a sample data of ages of men, a sample of men 48 years. Now, a possible inference draw from the study is that being married is what associated with a longer life for men. People, we can see that 70% were alive at the age of 65, but those who were married, 90% were alive at the age of 65. So inferential statistics, we use it to make a decision, study, do some studies, experiment or observational studies to make a decision. But for descriptive statistics, it's just to organize our data. Um, the goal is to understand the data, explore the data. So organizing, exploring the data. So this will be the conclusion of our first lecture, lecture number one. In this lecture, again, is to get the concept of what is a statistics, what is the difference between population and sample, and also the branch of uh, statistics, what's the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. We also went through the characteristics, what is a parameter and what is a statistic. That is the characteristics of the population and also the sample. So again, wish everybody the best. We will start with the lecture number two soon. Thank you. Bye.